With the extreme power levels being produced by the engines in the open and pro-class cars here at World Time Attack, making sure the engine remains reliable really comes down to monitoring all of the engine's vital signs, ensuring that nothing goes outside of the realms that the tuner is happy with. We're here with Mitch from Matux Racing, tuner of the world's best technologies R33 Skyline GTR that's running in the open class here. We're going to find out exactly how Mitch is using technology technology to do exactly that. Alright, so Mitch, before we get into the electronics package, let's just talk a little bit about the engine and find out what power this car is making. So it's an RB engine, but can you give us a little bit more of the specifics of that engine? Yeah, so it's a PMC built billet 2.8 stroker. Um, it's got uh, one of his cylinder head packages on it. Um, as I said, 2.8 litre, 6870 precision, um, the usual sort of what everyone seems to run these days. Yeah. I think the uh, the path has been well trodden for a Nissan RB performance, so uh, there's nothing uh, nothing particularly unusual there. In terms of the power level, what uh, what is it making and how much boost are you using? Yeah, on our dyno uh, at Matux, it ran up 950 horsepower, about 32 pounds of boost. Now, those sort of numbers these days aren't that unusual, and the problem is most people are missing the point that the engines making this sort of power most often are used for drag racing where they may only be under high load for maybe six to eight seconds. Here we're talking about a car that needs to put that power to the track for a minute 20, a minute 30 and that is a completely different world of hurt for the, the mechanical package. So let's get into the electronics and tell us what's managing the engine. Yeah, so from last year we've swapped from a full Haltech package to a full Motec system. Uh, so in the car, front to back, um, PDM in the front, M150, C187, and then another PDM in the back. All right, so there's a lot of acronyms there. For yeah. those who aren't into yeah. Motec lingo, let's start yeah. with the PDM. That stands for a power distribution module. It's an electronic way of distributing power to all of the circuits on the car, essentially replacing fuses and relays. Yeah. The M150, that's the ECU, and that's really the heart of the whole, the whole package. Uh, in terms of Motec's ECUs, there are a variety of uh, firmware packages that do different things. What are you running on that particular ECU? This is just running out of the box GPR package from Motec. Okay, so GPR, general purpose race, so all of the functions to control the engine, plus uh, race functions such as traction control, launch control and a variety of others. And then you're running the C187, so this is a dash logger. So it starts getting us into the areas that I'm interested in, because conventionally those dash loggers are a central logging hub, so tuners such as yourself, this is where you're going to be downloading data to look at the engine vitals as well as the chassis. But importantly as well, when the driver's out there on the track, you really want the driver to be able to focus solely on driving the car, and mainly, they're only going to be looking at the shift light to tell them when to pull the next gear. So you've gone one step further though, and instead of just incorporating driver warnings, you're actually using telemetry. Give us some insight into what that telemetry system's all about. For sure, so we've got the Motec T2 telemetry system on here. Basically the C187 dash just spits out a set of um, channels that I've specified over a radio link um, that comes back to the pits here. I've got a laptop that runs the Motec T2 server. It reads that data in and then that data comes into i2 Pro live straight from the car, yeah. So it's essentially like looking at the data logging after the car's been yeah. out on the track but you can actually do that live while the car's still circulating. Yep, correct, yeah. Okay, so is there any reliability problems with that link, with that radio link between the car out on the track and getting that data solidly back in the pits, or is that fine? Um, yeah, look, the radio comms has a little bit of error checking built in. The biggest thing is just getting good coverage of our aerial. So we run an aerial up onto the roof, um, and we do lose about five seconds of comms as it goes over behind Corporate Hill. Um, as it comes back though, um, those error packets sort of bunch up and then we get them all in a quick succession. So you don't really lose that much as long as you've got good coverage. So essentially it makes up for the, the data you've lost but you just don't get to see it live for those five seconds. Yeah, exactly. All right, so you've got all of that data coming in. There's gonna be a lot to take in. What specifically are you looking for in terms of making sure the engine is doing what it should and everything is inside the parameters you're happy with? That's actually changed since uh, we've gone from testing earlier in the week to now day two. Uh, so earlier in the week we were really worried about uh, temperatures and making sure that um, coolant temperature, intake air temperature and oil temperature were all under control. Last year we had a lot of cooling issues. 
this year that's been completely fixed. So at the start, that's mainly what I was looking at. I knew the tune was good and we ran the engine on a slightly lower power during testing. Now that we've come to the pointy end of the event, um, it's now more focused on uh, engine health. So we are leaning on the engine a little bit more um, late in day two now. So now I'm more looking at uh, things like EGT uh, temperatures, um, oil pressure, um, and making sure that uh, what the driver is giving us in terms of feedback is actually working. So things like um, peak speed down the straight and things like that, yeah. Now, of course, the next concern is you see something that you don't like. Uh, it's pretty hard to run out from the pits and actually stop the driver. So how are you, how are you getting this information through to the driver? Yeah, the whole team has full-time radio comms back to the driver, so we can simply just give him a uh, command to say, get off it. Um, it's good too, he can give us some feedback so that we can straight away know if we've made some changes, he can say it's worked, it hasn't, and can come back in pits so that we don't maybe lose a whole session. Now let's go back though, because of course with that Motec C187 you do have the ability to essentially uh, set up a range of alarms with a variety of parameters uh, that can then trip a warning message, bring up a warning light to alert the driver something's not wrong and then he can read the message on the dash. So how do you see the telemetry being beneficial over that style? Um, look, some of the things that the driver may not understand, um, for example, I was talking about EGT before, when we start to lean on the engine, we're not going to have a screen for him to look down and, and see six individual lights, so um, that's more, uh, we give him just a general warning on the screen uh, if anything does go outside of our parameters, um, so that he has to do the most amount of driving and the least amount of looking at, at, at what else is happening. I think a lot of people will lose sight of the fact that these cars are incredibly fast. It, it's hard for most people to get their head around exactly what the driver is dealing with out there on the track and particularly in open class we're not talking about professional drivers as well so really the more the driver can concentrate on solely doing his or her job and driving the car and uh, keeping it pinpoint accurate the better job they're going to be able to do of getting speed out of the car and then you've also got the ability from the pits to decide exactly exactly how much of an issue something is and whether the driver needs to know about it. Yep, exactly right. Alright Mitch, it's great to see how technology is improving the performance and ultimately the reliability of these cars. Uh, you've still got a few sessions to go so we wish you all the best for the rest of World Time Attack. Thanks for the chat. Thanks a lot. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.